Hello and welcome to Complexity Limits Guide for the Mythic Ilganoth Encounter, written and produced by Crazy Puck in coordination with Complexity Limit, brought to you by GameStop. Before we begin, please note we will only be discussing the mythic version of this encounter. We will not be going into detail on how any of the heroic mechanics work. If you want to learn more about how the heroic mechanics work or the basics of the boss overall, please check out our heroic boss guide on the channel. For this fight, we do not recommend using the strategy Limit has and is going to continue using. Instead, we recommend if you're a new guild that's starting out progress to use the no dispel strategy that was popularized by the Chinese guild Alpha. If you ask anybody in Limit, they almost all hate the strategy and nobody really has any desire within the guild to do it. However, we do recognize that because of the way this strategy functions and the way it removes a mechanic, it is mechanically an easier strategy to execute, especially for new guild going in, and it'll probably result in faster progression with fewer wipes for you. Just a note on this though, because Limit has never actually killed the boss using the no dispel strategy, we don't have any footage of it either. So we're gonna play our own kill video from our first kill in the background, but keep in mind, it will not show the circles actually staying on the raid. We recommend going in with two tanks, three healers, and 15 DPS. The biggest mechanical change to how the fight works on Mythic is the way the Cursed Blood debuff functions. On Heroic, it goes on random people during Phase 2 and just explodes after 8 seconds. On Mythic, the duration is now infinite, and it is first applied 20 seconds into the fight on 8 people, and then every 45 seconds throughout the rest of the fight, it's applied to another 8 people. The circle around the affected players now also grows and shrinks. At max size, it'll explode, dealing moderate damage to anybody within the circle, including the actually affected player. When it's dispelled or removed in any way, it'll deal raid-wide damage based on the size the circle was when it was removed. The larger the circle, the higher the raid damage. There's also a new add in phase two, which we'll go into detail about later. For our recommended strat, however, you just never dispel any cursed blood debuffs, hence the name the no dispel strat. By doing this, the total damage taken by your raid as a whole throughout the course of the entire fight is reduced by over 30%. The damage is reduced by so much that you can not only just three heal it, but it's actually the recommended way to go. The added benefit to this is having the extra DPS makes everything else in the fight move a little bit more quickly and smoothly and gets you through a little bit faster. The secondary benefit is that the touch of the corruptor, the mind control effect, cannot be applied to players with cursed blood. By the third set of cursed bloods going out, which is cast at a minute and 50 seconds into the fight, your entire raid will have the cursed blood effect. From that point on, the mind control debuff can never be applied to anybody in your raid, which means by using this strategy, you eliminate one of the debuffs. This is why we as a guild don't necessarily like the strategy, but Blizzard has signaled that they don't plan on changing it, so it is easier to progress in this, and this that's why we're recommending it. Now, as a warning, these benefits do come with a downside. From that minute 50 point in the fight, when the entire raid has the cursed blood effect, nobody can die. If a single person dies, their circle will then explode on the raid as if it was dispelled. That explosion will almost certainly kill a second person. Likely, that would be someone whose circle just reached full size and exploded on them. When that second person dies, the second debuff exploding on the entire raid will probably wipe the raid. This progression of events can happen within half a second, and that'll be the situation for the majority of your wipes. This strategy is essentially just built on a house of cards. The moment one of those cards falls over, the raid wipes. The upside is you'll likely get much further into the fight much easier because it's less damage going out overall and more DPS that you'll have available to you and that's what makes the strategy require a little bit less coordination overall just to execute properly. Okay so let's actually get into fighting the boss. Phase 1 is going to play out mostly like heroic outside of the cursed blood debuffs of course. The tanks should swap after every Eye of Nazoth cast. For the puddles you'll want preset areas of the room to get covered based on which phase one you're in. The idea here is to cover an area, then shift the raid clockwise for the next phase one. Ideally, you'll leave about half the room, if not a little bit more, that'll be clear for you to use during the third organ and for the fourth and final phase one, giving you as much room as you possibly can have to deal with the mechanics and kite around the bloods during that final burn phase. To help with this, 
your ranged and healers should bait the cast by standing near either the new drop area or right next to existing puddles. Now as far as dealing with the cursed blood circles that'll be on the raid, it's important to know that they will only deal damage at the max size. That means that following someone's circle actually exploding, it's then safe to be inside their circle. You'll want to use this to your advantage throughout the fight, giving you a lot more room overall for positioning and moving around. This will come in especially handy for melee, as they can mostly stay near each other, except when someone's circle is about to explode, they need to move out, let the circle explode, then as soon as that happens, they can move back in to the rest of the group. The blood adds remain largely the same as in Heroic. On Mythic, they become immune to crowd control after 30 seconds, so up to that point you want them slowed as much as possible. You also want your ranged DPS to kill them as quickly as possible. Just a note on the 30 second mark, entangling roots persists through that change, so if you put roots on one of these adds at 28 or 29 seconds after it spawns, you'll still get the full duration of roots. That comes in handy really well later on in the fight. You wanna make sure you don't let these guys get too far out of hand or it can overwhelm your raid very quickly. Between the melee damage from the bloods and the dot damage from the bloods, it can create a lot of extra damage on the raid. And remember, if one person dies, you'll probably wipe pretty close to instantly. So minimizing the damage you take from the bloods is very important. Your priorities on the bloods will change a little bit in the last Ilganoth phase, but we'll get into that later. During the organ phases, the room's gonna feel pretty tight. Healers are gonna wanna rotate cooldowns during this phase, as people are probably gonna be standing in each other's circles a little bit. This is even more likely for the melee, as there's only so much room around the organ to stand. Because of this, the healers are gonna wanna be pumping as hard as they can to make sure you don't lose anyone. Again, remember, one death is probably a raid wipe. As far as the organs that you aren't currently attacking, you'll wanna interrupt all of the pumping blood casts. If you have two Warlocks, they can actually take care of an organ entirely by themselves using their Fell Hunter's Interrupt and you lose minimal DPS. According to THD, you have to time your Interrupt to be exactly 0.4 seconds on the organ, otherwise you're not going to be able to make it work. Outside of that specific circumstance, just assign range DPS to Interrupt Duty, three people per organ except for the Warlocks. Now, as we mentioned earlier, there's a new ad that spawns at the beginning of every organ phase, the Clotted Corruption ad. These guys will regularly cast Absorbing Charge at one of the furthest away players, and if they hit any of the blood adds during this charge, each blood the Clotted Corruption absorbs gives it a 10% damage increase buff. While not necessary, having a couple blood adds get absorbed is actually pretty useful, as they die when they get absorbed, meaning you don't have to DPS them down. Also as a note, the charge itself deals a pretty substantial amount of physical damage, but because it's physical, Blessing of Protection from a Paladin will prevent all of the damage. Again, it's not something that's necessary, but it's a really nice thing to do if you can. Your goal is to kill the Clotted Corruption before a third charge. If you can successfully do this, a really nice benefit to your aid is having two Paladins, because by having two, you can prevent anyone from ever taking damage from the charge by having a Blessing of Protection up for each one of them. After you've gone through all three organs, and you enter the fourth and final Ilgnoth phase, pop Bloodlust. Your DPS should make sure they've saved their cooldowns for this point. The goal here is a little different than the earlier Ilgnoth phases. This time, it's a straight burn. Kill the boss before anyone dies to the damage going out. You'll want to crowd control the bloods for as long as you can, and keep your DPS focused entirely on the boss. Quick tip for managing the bloods here. If you have any druids in your raid, and they're able to, they should be specced into mass entanglement. The bloods become immune to new CC 30 seconds after the spawn. There's a bit of a loophole though. You can mass root the bloods 29 seconds after they spawn, and they'll still be rooted for the entire 30 second duration. This gives you way more time to just let them chill away from everyone stuck in the roots while your raid nukes the boss. Once the bloods do get loose, kite them as much as possible, use Blessing of Protection if it's up to stop some of the melee damage, use defensives, and just keep yourselves alive. Kill the boss before the ads running loose kills someone and your raid instantly wipes. Thanks for watching. We hope you found the guide helpful. If you'd like more details on this encounter or how it works, please click the link below to our written guide. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. You can also find the rest of our Nihilotha boss guides right here on our channel or at complexity.gg. For more content like this, follow Complexity on Twitter and subscribe to their YouTube channel. To keep up with Limit's Race for World First, follow them on Twitter. Happy reading!